A couple months ago, I created this 10 gallon aquarium and accidentally spawned an entire ecosystem. It took me months to stabilize it and get to a point where things didn't keep dying and the tank inhabitants just kind of look after themselves. As you can see, things quickly spun out of control and maintaining the tank has kind of been like a challenging juggling act trying to keep everything balanced. So in today's video, I'll show you how I created this tank, the steps I took, the mistakes I made and the lessons I learned. So when I first bought this tank, I wasn't actually planning to make this big ecosystem with plants and different life forms. I thought I'd just have one fish and a few plastic plants, no gravel or substrate, and I'd keep it simple. But after a while I got bored and I decided that actually I do want a massive underwater jungle and ecosystem. I had to make several trips to the fish market to pick up things like gravel, ornaments and different types of plants. And after a while the tank started to look more like a natural ecosystem. Next, I would like to show you each of the different species in my tank. I have lots of snails. One day they just started appearing out of nowhere. I noticed they like to lick the glass. I guess they're eating algae that stuck to it. And then we have little cherry shrimp. No tank can be complete without cherry shrimp. I started off with 5, but now I have over 30, because they had babies. And finally, I have 8 neon tetra fish. In the beginning, I only started off with this one better fish. And I also bought some plants from the fish market. And then I also added in some neon tetra. Unfortunately, I didn't realize that the better fish hated other fish and would also start eating my shrimp. So after I witnessed the better fish eat one of my shrimp, which was very savage and brutal, I decided to move the better fish into a new home. As soon as I moved the better fish out of the tank, everything else in the tank seemed to be much happier. I guess it is a pretty nice feeling not having to worry about being eaten anymore. I had to lay down a layer of gravel so I could hook the plants into it and they could form roots. I didn't buy enough gravel at first so I had to keep going back to the shop to buy more gravel. I think in total I used about 2 kilograms of gravel and had to wash it to get all the dirt and grime off of it and make it safe for the tank. Everything was going well, but then when I looked at the Neon Tetra closely, I could see tiny white spots on them. Apparently this is some kind of parasite, a disease called white spot disease. So I was very worried about the health, and I went back to the fish market again and had to pick up some white spot medicine. And I added that to the tank, and after a week or two, the white spots disappeared from the fish. The treatment makes all the water go blue, which was kind of scary at first, but I think this is completely normal. Make sure you keep a close eye on the fish and check their bodies to make sure they don't have some kind of sickness. The plants I bought, initially I bought three of them. I don't know what species they are, maybe someone knows. But when I bought them, they were much smaller. And then after a few weeks and months, they just exploded in growth. And there's now so many leaves, I sometimes have to snip the leaves to clear up some space. And a lot of the leaves start rotting and they get eaten by the snails and the shrimp, which is good as a food source. So basically, the snails and the shrimp eat the leaves and then they poo and then the poo gets processed by the bacteria in the tank and then the plants use the poo as fertilizer to then grow more leaves. It's a nice little cycle actually. One problem is there's so many leaves and plants near the light because that's where the light source is. It kind of blocks out the light reaching the other plants which is further to the right side of the tank and also the tank looks kind of dark because there's this thick ceiling of leaves. I need to clear up more of it really. I don't know why there's so many snails. I didn't buy any snails and for the first few weeks I didn't see any snails until maybe a month later I saw very tiny ones start to appear and now there's loads. There's probably like 30 to 50 snails and they've gone pretty big and they keep multiplying. So I don't know what I'm going to do when there's hundreds of them. I might have to start taking them out but for now they seem like they're doing a good job at cleaning up algae and rotting leaves but they also eat the live leaves as well which I'm okay with at the moment because I do have way too many leaves. It's kind of funny because when I put in the fish food the shrimp and the snails love the fish food as well and they go straight for it. It's funny because the fish food contains shrimp so the shrimp are like eating themselves. Sometimes I put a carrot in there as well they really love the carrots too. 
I blanch the carrot to soften it up, I don't cook it too much, but I notice if I add a raw carrot, they don't really seem to touch it much. So I boil a carrot for maybe a few minutes to soften it up, and I put a slice of it in there, or sometimes a strip of it, and they just eat it over a few hours. Sometimes I leave it in there overnight, and it's gone by the next day, so they eat it pretty quickly. So you'll notice there's quite a few smaller shrimp as well. They had babies. Actually, as soon as I added the new shrimp into the tank, they already had eggs. And after a few weeks, the eggs started to hatch. And the tank was full of these tiny little shrimp that took me a while to actually notice. I started off with five adult cherry shrimp. One of them got eaten by the betta fish. So four cherry shrimp turned into about 30 baby shrimp. I think there's about 30 of them now. It's been a few months and they've gone pretty big now. When they start breeding, 30 cherry shrimp could turn into hundreds of new baby shrimp. It's interesting because some of them are bright red, but then some of them are kind of orangey looking and very see-through. You can see all the internal organs and the guts and you can see the poop moving along their back. One day I saw this snail do something kind of strange. It completely came out of its shell and it was doing like these spins and twirls. And then it managed to re-enter the shell and land gracefully onto a leaf. I've never seen a snail do this before and I didn't even know a snail could come out of its shell like this. When I zoomed in with my camera I noticed these tiny little worms around the gravel. And at first it kind of scared me, I thought it would be dangerous for my fish, but it turns out they're actually beneficial for the fish tank. They eat up poo and rotten stuff and make it safer and cleaner for the tank to digest. When it comes to cleaning the tank, I don't really do much to clean it, compared to when I first started the tank. I used to use a pump to siphon out the gravel, because I thought all of the poop building up in the gravel would be bad for the tank. It turns out that after months of not siphoning, actually nothing has changed and the inhabitants of the tank seem completely fine. The only thing I do is I take a small sponge on the end of a chopstick and I wipe away the algae so I can see inside of the tank more clearly. I think if you have a good ecosystem of bacteria and cleaner creatures like shrimps and snails to keep things under control, the inhabitants of the tank sort of just keep things clean and under control by themselves without you really needing to do anything. I had a fish tank a couple years ago and I was changing the water every few days. I would siphon out the water and then put in new water and I was doing this every few days and it took me years to realize that you don't really need to do this and actually doing that is more harmful for the tank. The fish will eat food and then poop and then the bacteria that should be in the tank will help break down the poop so it's safer and then the cleaner creatures like the shrimp and snails will then help clean up rotten stuff and then the plants should absorb the leftover poop and use that as fertilizer and create oxygen in the tank. So really you don't even need an air filter. Everything takes care of each other. The only thing I have to do is topping up the tank with more water because it keeps evaporating. I found out that there's no need to keep taking water out of the tank. I find that the shrimp are the most interesting things to watch in the tank. They're very busy all the time, always looking for food, and I really like watching how they scurry around and try and swim about. They're not very graceful swimmers, they do it kind of clumsily, but they're much more interesting to observe than the fish or the snails. The fish don't really do a lot apart from swimming around, which I guess is the only thing they can do. So I do enjoy the shrimp much more than the fish. So I think that's all for today. Thanks for watching my video and I hope you enjoyed it.